going to our program for today. We are going to go into our program for today. And I don't know if you, I believe you can see my screen. We are going to start from it. Uh, and that's it. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. That's the topic for, for today. You know, there's a price to pay. And, and these are last, I believe this is the last Thursday, I mean, last Tuesday in the month of October. This is the last Tuesday in the month of October. And our topic is there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. You go to the store to buy something, there's a price to pay. I went shopping, I don't shop, I just went shopping briefly last weekend. And when I saw, I had a budget, and like most of us did, mental budget. By the time I, <laughs> by the time I was done, I was, I was kind of nervous about the amount I spent, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. You go, I mean, when you go to school, um, they, they, there's a price to pay to be excellent. There's a price to pay to get the best grades. For those that are at the top of their field in athletics, in any aspect or any dimension of who they are, they pay the price. There is nobody that is at the top without paying a price. Even people that are in the secular world. You know, I was looking at, um, just in the past, just Michael Jackson. He spent hours, hours working on his craft, singing, working on his, um, you know, the rudiments of his dance and everything. These kind of guys, they are very anal, they're very annoying because they know what they want. They are, they are perfectionists, if that they want to use. There's a price to pay. So there's nobody that you see that is doing well in general that is not paying a price. You can only depend on your natural talent for a while before your natural talent gives out. That's why you see that most of the people that are successful most of the time, most of the time are not that talented. Many of them are not that talented. If you look at the um, best wide receiver for those that for the NFL, the best wide receiver is Jerry Rice. He played for the San Francisco 49ers. He's not the most athletic guy in the world. He's not the fastest guy in the world. But that guy worked hard. That guy worked his butt off. There are many people that were better than him. Randy Moss, for those that <laughs> Randy Moss was more athletic, taller, faster than him. Terry Owens. Better, more athletic than, than um, Jerry Rice. But Jerry Rice is the best in terms of even some people even rank him as the best NFL player. But now Tom Brady is coming in. What am I trying to say? There is a price to pay for anything you want. There is a price to pay, good or bad. You know, even for those that serve the enemy, that serve the devil, when they go and ask for something, the enemy will say, Bring this. If you watch African movies, for those that if you watch African movies, just raise your hand. <laughs> you go to they go to a shrine, and and the the gods can say bring um, a white chicken. You know, some people can even say bring uh, curry, bring salt, bring tomato. Bring, you know, I mean, you're just making stew for them. What am I trying to say? There is a price to pay for where you want to be. And the Bible is in the book of Luke 14, Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. Luke chapter 14 from verse 28 to 13 it says, for which of you intending to build a tower, intending to build a house, intending to start something, intending to undertake a journey, does not sit down first and count what? The cost, whether he has enough to finish it. If you are traveling tomorrow, I mean, before you even decide to travel, you will first this, check your bank account to see that you have enough money to undertake that journey. He said, you, if, for which of you intending to build a tower and build a house does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, less after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. <laughs> Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Where I come from? People build houses sometimes and it takes them years years to build it. You see a building that has been there for five years. <laughs> you know, so God is saying here that for you to start something, you first count the cost. There is a cost to serving God. Count it a cost to serve God. That's why when Jesus was calling disciples, he told them, he said, leave your father and your mother alone. Come with me. He said, come, on, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. There is a price to pay in serving God. No, even Bible says that if a man that puts his, hand, his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. A man that puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. 
nothing comes free. For those that have studied economics, there's nothing like free lunch. There's no free lunch. If you go to a place and they are giving free pen, the pen, the cost of the pen came from somewhere. If you go to a place and they're giving free food, they're giving, giving free coupons, it's not free. It costs somebody something. It costs the company something. So God is saying here to you and me, there is a price to pay. You want to be the best. You want to scale new heights. You want to do new things. You want to leave a mark on this world. God is saying to you and me, there is a price to pay. Tell yourself, I will pay the price. So say well, to yourself, I will pay the price. I will pay the price. I may write this show. I used to watch this show when I first moved to the US. I was, I mean, way younger. The price is right. I you read this show. The price is right. I actually put Bob, Bob Barker because I used to watch him. The, the new host now is the guy from Cleveland. I forgot his name. Jim Carrey is the new host of The Price is Right. But when I used to watch it growing up, it was this guy, Bob Barker. And he's still alive. This guy is still kicking at 96 or so. Or somewhere in his 90s, I believe. The Price is Right. On, for, for those that watch that show, you realize that they bring out a product. They bring out a product. Sorry, the, the alarm, my alarm went off. They bring out a product. They bring out, um, um, sorry, they bring out the product. They bring out different things and they ask you to guess the price. Sorry about that. They bring out the product and they ask you to guess the price. And the person that is closest to that price wins it. So if they bring out the car now, this is like in 2021 Chevy, Chevrolet Impala. And somebody says 25,000, somebody says 30,000, somebody says 35,000. The person closest to the amount wins. What am I trying to say? In life, even looking at the show, there is a price to pay. Don't emphasize what we mentioned in the last slide. There is a price to pay. I was into uh, my father in the Lord, Pastor Iya Diboye, and he said that people always ask me, what is the secret to my greatness? He said, there is no, I've already shared it so many times. He said, number one, holiness. And he mentioned that he does 40 days prayer and fasting. In my mind, I'm like, man. <laughs> now, it's not 40 days where you break in the afternoon, like you break, you, you skip breakfast and break in the afternoon, or you skip um, breakfast and lunch and break in the evening. It's like straight up 40 days like Moses, straight up 40 days like Elijah, straight up 40 days like Jesus. He said, I do 40 days fast. And for what I heard, he does it three times a year. Three times a year. 40 days plus, no food. 40 days and 40 days, I'm like, bro, so for you to see that there is a there is a price to pay, then look at the book of Ecclesiastes three. I know it's kind of small, but I hope you can read it. Ecclesiastes three, Ecclesiastes three. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time I would say a time to reap or a time to pluck what is planted. A time to reap. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and not say anything. And a time to speak. A time to love, and it says a time to what? Hate. A time of war and a time of peace. If you have lived in this world long enough, you must have experienced almost everything I just read. There is a, there's times and seasons under the heavens. When you were 15 years old, many of you were not burdened with, the, with paying bills. You are not burdened with going to work or getting a job. Some of us were not. When you were 15 years old, your parents or your caretaker paid for you. But now that you are older, for many of us that are now in our 20s, 30s, 40s, I mean, except if you have someone that is sponsoring you, <laughs> you need to take care of yourself. You need to pay bills. You need to step up because the time of being a baby and being babied is gone. Now, a time of being mature is here. God is saying to you and me that there's a time and season for everything. A time to sow and a time to reap. Look at verse 5. A time to cast away stones. And in time to gather stones. In that passage, I see it from this point of view, like when Joseph told Pharaoh, he said there'll be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. In your seven years of plenty, let's gather, let's save, let's invest. 
because there'll be seven years of farming. In every, have you ever noticed that there's a time when you have plenty of money and there's some time when you are trusting God for money? You have to you raise your hand. There's a time when there's money. You can even go to your best favorite restaurant. You can buy things, you can order stuff. And the time where you're like, Lord, man, I need money. Because when in your time of plenty, God is saying, gather. So that when your time of, when there's a time when there's not that much, then you have enough. So God is saying to you and me, in this time period, it is time for you to pay the price. This is the time where you should pay the price. This is the time where you should count the cost. This is the time where you should pay the price. Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 11, 10. Mark chapter 10. Let's open our, book, our Bible to the book of Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Let's check Mark chapter 10. Please 10, 30. Mark chapter 10, verse 29. Mark 10, 29. If you have your Bible, open it. Mark 10, 29. And it says, truly, Jesus answered, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left a house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake and for the gospel's sake, who shall not receive a hundred times as much now in this age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields with persecution in the age to come, eternal life, but many who are first will be last, and the last shall be first. So God is saying to you and me, there is a cost in serving God. If you are, if you are serving God genuinely, there are some things you can't do again. Let's say now you had, you had, you had you are, there's somebody that you are romantically involved with, or there's somebody you are doing, like let's say friends with benefits. When you become saved, when you become born again, that friends with benefits, premarital sex, after God will face it out of your life. I don't know how to say it. God will face, until when you are married. <laughs> there are things that you have done before that God will start correcting you and start saying, this is not how you should behave. I don't know about you. There are some times when God corrects when it hurts. <laughs> because this is the time where God is saying, this is the time to pay the price. May God help us to pay that price in Jesus' name. May God help us to pay the price in Jesus' name. May God help us to pay that price in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a cost dimension to anything you want. There is a cost dimension to everything you want. Anything you want can be gotten, but there is a cost dimension, dimension to it. Life is marked by times and seasons. We had summer not too long ago. Now we're in, in the fall. Before you know it, it's winter. God is saying to you and me that because life is marked by times and seasons, God is saying for you to enter into your rest, there is a price for you to pay. May God help us to pay the price in Jesus' name. Do you know that where you are right now is as a result of what you have done yesterday? Where you will be tomorrow is what you are doing today. So where you are right now is because of the decisions you made yesterday. All the decisions you made yesterday is what is showing now. The decisions you are making now will tell in what you will do tomorrow. May God help us in Jesus' name. Proverbs 10, 4. Proverbs 10, 4. Proverbs 10, 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. He who is lazy becomes poor. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. The hand of the diligent makes rich. If you want to be great tomorrow, you must start practicing greatness today. May God help us in Jesus' name. I heard this man of God, his name is Bishop Oedipo. He said, before, back then, when he knew that he was a king, like, you know, the Bible says we are kings, we are kings. And the Bible says you are gods. He said, when, before he goes out, he will check what he's wearing. Am I dressed right? Will a king go out this way? Will a king be dressed like this? What am I trying to say? Where you are going tomorrow, or where you want to be tomorrow, start now. I'll give an example. You want to be a doctor. You want to be like a neurosurgeon. And you know, you realize that, okay, it takes 12 years to become a neurosurgeon. And you are maybe 25. And you're like, man, that takes a long time. It takes 12 years to become a neurosurgeon. Man, I don't want to do it. But in the next 12 years, what will you be? <laughs> it takes 12 years to become a neurosurgeon. If you start today, in the next maybe 10 years, you might become a neurosurgeon. But if you don't take the step now, in the next 10, 12 years, what will you be? Because time is still going. If Jesus tarries, in the next 10, 12 years, 
where will you be? I want to ask you that question. In the next 10, 12 years, add 10 years to your age. Add 12 years to your age right now. Where will you be? Where, where do you be? And if you know what you want to be, you start now with counting the cost. Counting the cost. Count the cost. Count it. Count it right now. Now, let's look at what are the price to pay? What price do you pay for where you want to be? The first price I put there, and I believe it is the cost of discipline and deprivation. The cost of discipline and deprivation. The Bible says, if you look at the book of 1 Corinthians 9.27, it says, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Less after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. There is a cost of discipline and deprivation. You are a lot to yourself. I can see now where I am right now. I can sit down. I don't have TV, but if I had TV, <laughs> I can watch TV for the next 15 hours. I can go on Netflix and watch. I can binge on the show for the next 12 hours. But I know that the cost dimension to my destiny requires that I don't spend that much time doing stuff like that. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. All things are lawful, but all things are, not all things are expedient. I'm at the age where I can drink. If I want to order Chardonnay, what else again? Um, <laughs> see all this, I don't know all these drinks now. All these like nice drinks. Smirnoff. Um, I don't know. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Bud Light. If I want to go, I can go to the store and buy. I'm not sure my license and buy. But based on my own destiny, drinking is not part of it. You get my point? The Bible says that kings should not be drunk with wine. That's just me. I'm just talking from my own perspective. That's me. And for what I see in scriptures, there's a cost of discipline and deprivation. There's a place where you have to deny yourself. Jesus had to deny himself of the glory of heaven to come down earth to die for us. That's what you see in the book of Philippians 3 and verse 4. 3 and 4. That after he did that, God gave him a name above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. If you look at the book of Luke 22, Luke 23, Jesus was saying, Father, take this cup from me. But after he died, when he paid that price, that name above all name, Yeshua, that name is the name above all name. But it's at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. So Jesus paid that price so that he can become the name that is exalted above all names. For you to be the best. For you to get to the top, there is a discipline dimension to it. You are a lot to yourself. Nobody has to tell you what to do. You know that I'm supposed to do some things. And the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me give an example. You have $5,000. $5,000. We are wealthy in Jesus' name. I claim it. <laughs> we are all wealthy in Jesus' name. You have $5,000 and you can go and shop. You can go to the Louis Vuitton store. Although $5,000 is not enough in Louis Vuitton because one shoe can be $7,000. Let's say you go to Nordstrom. That's the whole, okay. You go shop. You go shopping in Nordstrom. You go there, you shop. You buy something for $2,000. Then you travel to Paris and you, know, you go to Germany. You go, you know around $2,000. Then you have $1,000, you buy food, you go to your favorite restaurant and you just throw it away. That's it. Now, how about this? You now have around that five, you have $5,000. You, you know what? $2,000 is for enjoyment. $3,000, I'm buying some stocks. I'm, I'm going to invest in some, some products. I'm going to put money in a fixed account somewhere. That $3,000 later, we can use $10,000. But if you spend everything, if you spend everything, then you won't get anything later. There's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. What am I trying to say here? There's a discipline dimension to getting into your rest. There's a discipline dimension to becoming great. There's a discipline dimension that you must adopt to become the best. And God is saying to you and me that we are the best. You are a chosen generation, first Peter two nine, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person, to show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There are many things you can do now, but because of the fear of God, you say, I won't do it because I know the glorious destiny that God has for me. Look at Joseph. 
Joseph could have slept with Potiphar's wife and become a glorified servant. But it's, it's, in his mind, it's like, the destiny God showed me is that I'm going to be great, that my father and my mother will bow before me, that my brothers will bow before me. No father will bow before his servant. No brother will bow before his servant. So the destiny is so in his head for it to come to fruition. He had to deny himself of sex. I you notice that most boxers, most people that are into like athletics, some of them, not all of them, many of them do indulge in sex before the competition. Many of them, many of them stay away. Except those that are trying to, <laughs> they deprive themselves of many things. I was watching Anthony Joshua one time. When he goes to fight, you know the guy is very wealthy. Now. Anthony Joshua, the boxer he, in the UK. Before he fights, he moves to his old apartment. He doesn't stay in his mansion. He moves his old apartment. Where living is so hard, he stays there just to deprive himself of comfort. When he's not done fighting, then he cannot go back to where he lives. There is a cost to getting to the top. I know we have prayed. I know we have done some things. I know people have prophesied over our lives. Ah, you'll be great. God will bless you. God will bless you, but you have a price to pay. And God will help us to pay that price in Jesus' name. Paul said, I discipline my body. I tell my body what to do. I tell my body. I can tell my body no. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let's move on. What is the second price that you have to pay? It's the price of prayer. And I also add with fasting. The price of prayer. The Bible says, I think it's Luke 81, men ought to pray and not faint. Men ought to pray and not give up. Book of James chapter 5, he said, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. The Bible says, so is this 2 um, Thessalonians 5, 17, he says, it says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray always. Pray always. Jesus prayed. You look at the book of Luke 22. He prayed. When you want God to help you fulfill destiny, when you want to get to the top, you must engage prayer. Prayer opens doors. Look at when Paul and Silas were locked in prison, in the prison. The first thing is that they prayed. You know, people say, Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang. They look at the singing part. But the first thing is that what they do, they prayed. If you want God to use you, if you want to break barriers, you want to enter into a higher level, a higher unction, you must engage prayer. Prayer is something you do all the time. You can pray. I can, like now, I can, as, I, as I'm speaking to you, I can be praying in my mind. Prayer is something you engage always. I, I had to run some errands today. As I was driving, I was just praying. I was praying. Because I knew that this evening, I have to share the word with you guys. <laughs> Even if I was not sharing the word, I was just doing just not regularly. It's a normal thing to pray. And when you pray, please, you don't pray and check Instagram. You can't pray and be on social media. There's some times when I'm working and I'm praying. So my mind is in between both. <laughs> but when you really want to pray, you must leave social media, leave and just spend time praying. Jesus went to the mountains to pray. Why did he stay with the disciples? He went to the mountain. And sometimes when he's praying, he will take his four selected few, uh, Peter and the other folks. He will he say, you guys stay here. He will go up higher to what? To pray. Just we leave the crowd and go and pray. Before he just chose his disciples, what did he do? He prayed. And Jesus is the perfect example of someone that prayed. For you to be great, you must pray. You know, anytime you, you fall into sin, anytime you lapse into sin, it's because you didn't pray. I'm telling you, prayer failure can cause sin to abound. Prayer failure can cause failure to abound. In most cases, most failure is prayer failure. When you don't pray, you open the door to, for the enemy to attack. You must be a man and a woman of prayer. The other day I was driving. I was driving. I just felt an urge to just pray. I was thanking God. I just felt an urge to just thank God. And I was just making a ton song and I hit, I hit the pavement. Loudly. Bow. I thought my tire already burst. I checked. I was like, wow. I checked and nothing happened. But who knows what the enemy planned? There are sometimes the enemy has planned something. Many people you say, why, people will say, why do good people die? Because sometimes they ignore the warnings that God is giving them. Sometimes, and most times, like, that's how good God, like most good, most good people die because of that. Sometimes people ignore the warnings. They, they ignore warning signs. God is saying to you, don't do something, you do it. Look at Samson. His parents told him, if you're looking for a woman, come, we will get you a wife. 
Some said, no, I want all those exotic women. I don't like the women in our own town. I don't like these Jews. I don't like them. I want those fine, fine girls out there. I want those girls that are out there. He went to Delilah. And Delilah was tricky. I mean, for someone to ask you the secret of your strength, and you told them a lie, and they acted on it, she did not tell you something. She said, oh, yo, if you, if you tie me, my strength will go away. She tied him. She said, oh, the police are here. He broke it. He broke it. I mean, for a woman to weary you, I mean, because if you read that passage, she read Samson. Samson said, you know what? The secret of my strength is my hair. God is saying to you and me, any failure you experience can be attributed to what? A prayer failure. Pray and say, Father, say now, give me the grace to pray. Just pray. Just take, take, say that prayer right now. Give me the grace to pray. Give me the grace to spend time with you. Give me the grace to pray. Father, I take a higher dimension of prayer. I am called to, to a higher dimension of you. Give me the grace to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Now, the Bible says, however, this does not go. This kind does not go out except by what? Prayer and fasting. Prayer is good, but when you add fasting to it, oh my God, you are adding some extra magi, extra pepper. You are adding, you are adding a push in the spirit. To get your prayers answered. Look at, I've mentioned this before. Daniel was praying. He was fasting for 21 days. 20 days. And A.J. Gabriel came and said, we have seen that you have been praying since. But the prince of Persia, the prince of Iran, has come and has stopped your blessing from coming. But A.J. Michael has gone to fight the prince of Persia. You can see that sometimes your prayers can be hindered by territorial spirits. Your prayers can be hindered by state spirits because every state has a dimension. If I mention California, something will come to your mind. Am I right? If I mention Las Vegas, if I mention Nevada, something comes to mind. If I mention New York, something comes to mind. If I mention <laughs> Georgia, something comes to mind. Every, if, I watch it, if I mention Washington, D.C., something negative comes to mind. Every state is governed by principalities, governed by some powers. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Every country is governed by some spirits. But God is saying to you and me that when you pray, when you fast, you are pushing in the realm of the spirit. You are acting God. You are piercing into that spirit realm, into that resistance, and you are getting your victory. May God help us in Jesus' name. When you pray, you are going to the past. Anything your fathers did, anything your grandfather did, anything your great-grandfather did, any evil thing, anything spoken to you, any curse, God is reversing it. May God give us the grace to pray and fast in Jesus' name. As a Christian, you should have a day when you fast. You should have a day when you fast. You should have one day, even if you are fasting till 12 p.m. Don't just fast and do hunger strike. You are fasting and you are praying and saying, Father, Wednesday is my prayer and fasting. I'm just giving an example now. Wednesday is my prayer and fasting day. Or Friday is my prayer and fasting day. Thursday or Monday. This is the day I have set aside to pray and fast. And fasting has very excellent benefits. First of all, you are resting your digestive system. If you are eating all the time, your, your, your digestive system is tired. It's like, please give me a break. I'm, I'm always digesting a bad, digesting panadium, digesting um, hamburger, digesting rice, beans, everything. Eh? Bolly. <laughs> so yeah, give me a break. <laughs> I need a break. So when you fast, you are actually giving your body a break. You are letting your body recover. Your body is resting. Number two, the spiritual benefits. You are breaking barriers. You are breaking chains. You are breaking yokes. You are reversing curses. You are entering into a realm of rest. This does not go except by prayer and fasting. And you know, it's because they brought the case to the disciples. The disciples prayed. Nothing happened. And the person that took it to Jesus and just prayed. And the thing disappeared. And they're like, why do we not cast out this demon? He said, eh, this one <laughs> is by prayer and what? Fasting. I know you guys are praying with me, but this one, you have to add fasting to it. Fasting is a, is a regular exercise that you must have. It is just, it is. You know people in other religions do that. I mean, you know that. People in other religions do that. There's a good that. Even Catholics, Lent, people in other religions do it. I feel like Christians in general are very frivolous. Like, ah, not big, not big. Sometimes your pastor will call it fast. Then, oh, 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 oh. Pastor, get out of job. 
There was one time, pastor called a fast in our church. I remember this years back now, pastor called a fast in our church. There was a, there was a family that was staying in our basement. I think they were trying to get a place to stay, but somehow, Sha, and I think it was a seven days fast. <laughs> I'm laughing at my own joke. On Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't know, doing the fast. I, you know, for those that have done seven days fast, by the second or third day, your eye is very bright, like, whoa, like I'm hungry. <laughs> so <laughs> we had them frying stuff in the basement. We were frying pepper because the, uh, alarm, the, the smoke alarm went off. And we're looking like, ah, we just got a fast. We got the, the fast going on. Even me, myself, if they say, pastor will call the fast, and I'm leaving the pastor's house, and I want to eat, pastor will not know that I'm eating. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I will covertly go and buy food or do something. This woman will fry food everywhere. You're, you're smelling pepper, smelling. Ah. <laughs> and those that did it, there's a difference in the life. I've, I saw the woman a couple of weeks ago. I saw her. I don't see, I didn't see any difference. No change. Those that fasted, there's a difference in their life. They are going to a higher trajectory. God is using them mightily. Don't fail to pray and fast because in your fasting, you are opening new vistas. You're opening new doors. You are opening a door. You are opening the door of your destiny. You are saying every closed door of my destiny becomes open now. In Jesus' name. Pray this prayer and say, Father, any closed door over my destiny, open it up in Jesus' name. Five seconds. Father, every closed door over my destiny, open it up in Jesus' name. Every closed door over my destiny, be opened in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. The next one is the price of knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. There's a price of knowledge, wisdom. You have to pay the price of reading. Many of us, I read though, it might take me time, but I what? I read. So my sister, my, I think my wife, she does um, audio. And I used to do that when I was in high school. Like I'll go to the library and I'll get the book. Let's say, what book am I reading now? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to, I, I'm going to show you the book I'm reading. I mean, I have my Bible here. I have some other books here. There's a book I'm reading right now, but I can't find it. But if I find it, I'll show it to you. There are many books I have, Sharp. You know. So what I'll, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll get the audio and I'll get the book. And if I'm listening to the audio and I'm reading at the same time, I read pretty fast. You can list your audio book in two days, in one day. <laughs> you can do that. There's a price of knowledge. You must pay the price of knowledge. How can you go into marriage? You don't know anything about marriage. You have not read books on, on how, like you're a man, you don't know how women think. You don't know how, how to deal with in-laws. You don't, I mean, you know, they say, I've heard this before, that if you want to hide, hide something from a black man or something like that, put it in a book. Have you heard that before? If you want to hide something from a black man, put it, put it in a book. If you want to pay, there's a price to pay. When you study, when you read, do you know, the higher things you do, the more you are paid. Okay, let me give you an example. A general doctor, is a general doctor paid as the same as a neurosurgeon? A general practice doctor? A doctor that does practices like this? Do they get paid the same as a neurosurgeon? No. Look at athletes. Okay, let's look at basketball now. Look at the, the, the seventh player on the bench for the Atlanta Hawks. Isn't getting paid as much as Stephen Curry or LeBron James? There's a price of knowledge. You put in the work. You put in the work. You put in the work. You read. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. There is a price to pay, the price of knowledge. Some, you know, for my work, you have to get certifications. You have, sometimes I, I'm like, man, eh. But I try my best. I watch a video so that I'm not I'm behind. If you are behind, your salary will remain behind. <laughs> There's some things that Jesus has done. There's some things you have to do. You have to pay the price of knowledge. Go back to school. When I got my master's, I didn't get loan. No. This is what I did when I was getting my master's degree. I would take one semester. I would stop. I should have gotten my degree earlier. I stopped because I didn't have money. <laughs> I would take, I would take one semester. I would take it. I would stop. When I have money again, I will pay. Now, if I, the money I used to get my master's degree, I would have bought a brand new BMW. I would have bought it. I would have bought it. I would have got it. Excuse me. I would have got it in nice Mercedes Benz. I got the S class. But the master's degree is, in general, is better than getting that. Now, 
with a master's degree, by God's grace, I put it to good use. I can get those things in succession. The price of knowledge, the price of knowledge, the price of study, the price of putting in the work, the price of reading. What book are you reading? I want to ask you, what is the last book you read? When was the last time you read a book? You know, Daniel said, he said, I learned by books. I don't know, I remember that, um, that scripture. He said, I learned by, by books. I don't know, I'm just summarizing that part. Daniel you mentioned himself, that I learned by books. And Paul said, he said, he, he was writing a letter. He said, bring my scripts, bring my, I mean, bring my books. You know, Paul was in prison a lot. Paul wrote a lot of these things that you read out of the New Testament. He wrote it in prison. He wrote it in prison. There's a price of knowledge. Now, I, I like to chill. I like to travel. I like to relax. But there's a time for that, a time to study, and a time to read. <laughs> Have you seen a student that, I mean, if you don't study, you are planning to fail. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, giving. I'm going to that. Giving. Giving. You can give thanks to God. You can give your time to God. You know, the Bible says that you serve God in the days of our youth. You can look at it. Let's look at that in number six. Let's give it. God says, give shall be given unto you. Luke 6, 38. Good measure, pray down, shake it together, and run over, shall men give unto your bosom. Give shall be given unto you. What is God saying about giving? Look at Cain and Abel. You all remember, remember the story of Cain and Abel. Cain gave the worst of his crops. Abel gave the best. When they offered their sacrifice, God accepted Abel's sacrifice, and God rejected Cain's sacrifice. And Cain became jealous. It's okay to go back and get the best crops to sacrifice to God. He became just and killed his brother. And God now told him, he said, your, bro your brother's blood is crying out against you. There is a price of giving. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That what did he do? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There is a price where you give into your next level. Look at that widow of Zarephath. That had her last meal. This widow had her last meal. She gave her last meal and God blessed her. I mean, can you imagine a prophet? I mean, I said before, if CNN, some of this network, news network, if they, they have said evil prophet steals widow's food and people start cursing him, that's how pastors are, pastors be deprived of their money. They are is taking money to fly, fly jets and buy houses. They are stealing from people. And, hey! What am I trying to say? There is a place where you pay the price of giving. Look at that other woman, Elisha, that rich woman, and her husband. She said, I perceive that he's the man of God. I'm giving you this. This is the Bible, please. Look at the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings. I perceive that this man is a man of God. Let's make a room for him. He also said, okay, go ahead. They made a room for him. The title of our message is The Price to Pay. That's the title of our message tonight. There's a price to pay. They made a room for him. Elisha asked Gehazi. He said, please, is there anything this woman needs? He said, well, the woman is wealthy. He said, but sir, she's barren and her husband is old. I'm trying to say that they don't have any chance of having children. He calls the woman. Elisha calls the woman and said, by this time next year, you will have a child. When she had a child, the child grew up. The child died. Guess what happened? She took the child back to Elijah. He said, you are the one that prophesied that I will have a child. He said, don't worry. And he raised that child back to life. What am I trying to say? That woman was destined to be barren. That woman was destined to be childless. But because she gave a room, a room in her house, God blessed her. If you honor a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. In the same place, that same first, second Kings, when there was famine in the land, Elijah wondered, go. Flee from this land, go somewhere else. By the time she left, she left her land and everything. When the family was ended and she came back to Israel, Gehazi was telling the king about the exploits of Elisha. Gehazi, the one that was cursed, <laughs> was talking about the exploits. He said there was a woman that was barren. As he was talking about that woman, she walked into the king. She walked into the kingdom. She walked into the palace. And Gehazi said, wow, that's the woman that Elisha blessed with his son. And she said, please, I've been out of this land for a couple of years now. And the king restored everything she had lost and gave her interest on the land. Can you imagine? 
Let's say somebody was fired from a job and he was getting paid ten thousand dollars every month, and he was out of a job for five years, and the company calls them that person back and gives them the salary you have earned in five years. Let's say over over the past five years you have earned about eight hundred thousand dollars, and the company writes a check of eight hundred thousand and says, since you have not worked for the past five years, we are giving you eight hundred thousand dollars, and we are even paying you more than we are paying you before. That's restoration. When you give, God will restore all you have lost. Joel, he said, I will restore the yes, the locust, the cacao, the, the power oil, the caterpillars eating. And I've mentioned before that locusts don't eat yes, but those spiritual locusts, they eat yes. A normal locust eats plants. They will go to a place and ravage the place. God is saying, the yes you have lost, I will restore. May God restore all the years you have lost in Jesus' name. Say amen. May God restore the years you have lost. May God grant you speed in Jesus' name. When you give, you are creating ease in life. Please don't think that your giving is to help God. You are giving to help yourself. You can't help God. The Bible says the silver and the gold is mine. Haggai 2.8. It says he owns a cattle upon a thousand hills. When you are giving your offering, you are not helping God. You are not helping the church. You are helping yourself. It's an opportunity for you to invest. I am saying this because some people are very recalcitrant. They are very hesitant to give. <laughs> some people say, why am I paying tight? My money is not enough. That's why you should give. Let's continue. Time is on our, time is on our side. Time is on our side. Let's be positive. Focus. There's a price of focus. There's a price. You know there's a new dance called focus. It's not new anymore. It's kind of old now. You know that focus, focus dance now. If you know, you know. <laughs> There's a price of what? Focus. A price of focus. Let's continue. Number six, what price do you have to pay? The price of seeking God early. For number one is the, the cost of discipline and deprivation. Number two is prayer and fasting. Number three is the price of knowledge. Number four is giving. Number five is focus. Number six is the price of seeking God early. The Bible says in Psalm 63 verse 1, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Look at um, Isaiah 55 verse 6. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him or call on him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. There is a price of seeking God early. The Bible says you should not despise our days of youth. Serve God in your days of youth. Serve God early. Please, when you serve God with your heart early, your middle years, your older years will be filled with joy. There are many old people that are depressed because they have sold their birthright when they were younger. Please, and it's not too late for you to change. You can be 50 and change. You can be 65 and change. God is saying to you and me, seek me early. Seek me now. Chase after me. Because when you do, you have peace of mind. The Bible says to be kindly minded is dead. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you seek God early, you enjoy peace of mind. And there's nothing that is greater than peace. Peace is very important. Seeking God early. It can also mean when you wake up, seek him early. Don't wake up and be checking Instagram. I have to even catch myself. You are waking up, you are taking social media, you are taking text, you are taking um, you know, Snapchat, Twitter. You are not putting your Bible, you are not saying thank you, Jesus. The first thing is your phone. Ah. Hey, how are you doing? Sorry, I slept off yesterday. What's going on? No, 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 no. The first person we talk to is God. Seeking God early. It might mean creating time for God. Waking up early or earlier than usual. Those who have time with God. May God help us in Jesus' name. And number seven, the price of thanksgiving. Psalm 149, 6 to 8. Let's read that quickly. For a round of Psalm 149. Psalms 149. 6 to 8, Psalms 149, 6 to 8. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. And it says, and two, and a two-edged sword, and two-edged swords in their hands. It's like you are singing praise to God and God is giving you a sword. He's giving you an ammunition to destroy your enemies. He's giving you an ammunition to destroy resistance. He says, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with shackles of iron. Those people that are the strong men that are making sure that you not succeed, God is saying that by your praise, you are bringing them down. 
by praises the wall of Jericho fell. I was reading that the other day. I don't want to go into the story of it now, but you know the wall of Jericho, it fell because of a large shout to God. Praise is a weapon of warfare. You have to pay the price of praising God. There are some things I want from God. I don't know about you. How many of you want something from God? There are many of us that we need some things immediately. We need instant money, miracle money. We need God to answer our prayers maritally. We need God to answer our prayers with our children in our careers financially. Start praising God. Praise him in advance for what he will do. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I talk about price. I talk about paying the price. But don't forget that there's a favor dimension to your destiny. There is a favor advantage. Don't forget that although you are paying the price, you are putting all the best because there are many people that are putting the best and their life has amount to nothing. There's people that studied well in school. And there are people that had least and lower grade that are doing better than them. There's a group that had first class, they had um, summer cum laude, magna, magna, you know, it's cum laude. And they are still below people that had nothing. They had nothing. There's a faithful dimension to enter into your destiny. Don't forget and don't despise that. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of favor. Look at the book of Psalms 44 verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, by their own means. And the Bible says, by strength shall, man, shall no man prevail. It's not by your strength, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, see the Lord of hosts. Nor did your own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. Because you favored them. Psalms 41 verse 11, by this I know you favor me, because my enemies does not triumph over me. For you to enjoy continued success, for you to be the best, don't forget that you have to engage the favor dimension of God. You need favor. I need favor. Because for you to gain speed in life, you can't do it by your effort and by your might. Although your effort and your might is important, you need the favor dimension of God. Father, I declare the declare over these people here that favor will rest upon them in Jesus' name. I declare and declare that the favor of God that they have not seen in a long time will rest upon them. According to Luke 252, that just grew in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man, I declare and declare that favor with God and man rests upon you in Jesus' name. May the favor of God transform your life. May the favor of God change you. May the favor of God lift your destiny out of the mighty clay. May the favor of God cause you to sing with kings and princes in Jesus' name. May that be your portion and my portion. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I wish I could give more examples and more stories about this. But I want to let you know that God wants to make you great. I was talking to somebody the other day. This person traveled to Nigeria, first class. For those that have traveled to Africa, traveled to, she traveled to Ghana, traveled to first class, first class. Now, first class from Atlanta, 5000 dollars 5, $5,300. But by the favor of God, she did not pay. Oh, no. If I tell you the amount she paid, you'll be angry. Let me not tell you. Let me not tell you. Because of the favor of God. She, ah, let me shut my mouth. Because of favor, back and forth. For, and for those that have entered from class before, it's different. You are enjoying your life. You are served as a king. You know, if you are hungry in all those other um, economy, for those that have done long journeys, you ask for extra food, they tell you that there's no food. You should get out. Who are you? <laughs> Let's pray. For those that have not given their life to Christ, Father, say, Father, have mercy on me. Wash me in your precious blood. Make me whole again. Take my life and do something with it. Spread that prayer. Father, I rededicate my life to you. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, for those that have asked you to enter into their lives, and have mercy on them and forgive them in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a favor dimension. Please, there's a price to pay, but don't forget about that favor dimension. Pay the price now so you can enjoy it later. So now, so you can reap later. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. May God help us in Jesus' name. I want to thank you all for joining tonight. I really, truly appreciate you. Join us same time next week and invite a friend. Same time next week, invite a friend. Who, eh? God bless you. Have a blessed day.